This one was a doozy for me. I wasn't even sure about making this video, but I at least had to look into it. And I'm so glad I did because one of the least talked about quarterbacks from last year's rookie class may have played better overall than a lot of the guys drafted above him. And before we get started in all the context surrounding Davis Mills rookie year and before we get into all the film, let's get some perspective because last year's draft class was loaded at the quarterback position. And this year's not so much. A lot of scouts and GMs said they haven't even given a single quarterback a first round grade yet. Not saying there won't be any taken in the first, there will probably be multiple, but it's definitely a different time than last year. But it is very likely that if Davis Mills didn't forego his last season at Stanford, that he would be QB1 in this year's draft class. We are prone to give first round quarterbacks chances and give them all sorts of excuses. And later round guys have to prove and earn everything to get in the good graces of the eyes of the media. And we have gotten much better at scouting QBs, but there are still some franchise guys like Dak Prescott who slipped through the cracks. But we have to keep this perspective. If Davis Mills was in a different quarterback draft class, he might very well have been QB1. So in this video, put aside everything you previously thought and what you've heard about Davis Mills as we really dig into the story and the film and together find the truth about his rookie season. There's obviously a lot to talk about, so let's get it started. Now, as we know, context is everything. And when and looking at the context of the Houston Texans, it doesn't get much worse. Every sports website has their list that they make in the offseason before the season starts, and these lists usually disagree on a lot of things just for the sake of being different. But they were unanimous on one thing. The Texans are the worst team in football, and they have the worst roster in the league, which is fitting because they were 4-12 and with J.J. Watt and a top three quarterback in the league, and now both of them weren't going to be playing the following season. So to say Davis Mills entered a bad situation as a rookie is an understatement, and who a affects the quarterback position the most. I would say it would be the offensive line, the coach, and the wide receiving core. Well, to finish the season, Pro Football Focus ranked them to have the 29th best offensive line in the league and dead last in receiving group talent. And to boot, they have a first year head coach. So not exactly the same thing as Mahomes got in terms of offensive weapons and coach to say the least. And not only that, he wasn't even the starter. He would back up Tyrod Taylor, which could be a completely different video for another day but again Tyrod goes down with injury enter Davis Mills and he did struggle early on against Buffalo but he only got stronger as the games went on in his final five games he completed 117 out of 171 passes for 1258 yards with nine touchdowns and just two interceptions and he had some great individual performances just look at some of the numbers he put up most of the time in a losing effort now, after seeing all this, this is what prompted Coach Lovey Smith to say that he played as good as any of the rookie quarterbacks last year. Well, let's see how that hold claims up. Let's compare Davis Mills to some other rookie quarterbacks who were in similar situations talent-wise. Let's start out with the generational talent, number one overall pick, Trevor Lawrence. Now, Davis Mills only started in 11 games compared to Trevor Lawrence's 17 games. Davis Mills pretty much dominates every statistical category. He had a better completion percentage, better, more touchdowns, less interceptions, and a better overall quarterback rating. And now we can look at the number two pick in the league, Zach Wilson. They played a similar amount of games, Zach Wilson with 13. But again, Davis Mills, better completion percentage, more touchdowns, less interceptions, and a better quarterback rating. And the first outlier in this list, we're going to look at Justin Fields because he did play one less game than Davis Mills did, at least starting wise. He had a better completion percentage. He had more touchdowns. They had the same amount of interceptions and they had a better quarterback rating. Now moving on to the fifth quarterback selected, we see Mac Jones, Pro Bowl quarterback, and this is where we start to see the jump. Even though Mac Jones is dominating Davis Mills, the numbers aren't that too far off. They had a similar completion percentage, Davis Mills obviously worse, less touchdowns, but how much that can that be attributed to the games, less interceptions, but again, amount of games, and he had a much worse passer rating. So when we start to see the cutoff point, we see that he is obviously worse than Mac Jones. We didn't get enough of the sample size to compare to Trey Lance, but this is how he ranks statistical wise against the top quarterbacks drafted above him. And it is harder to compare to Mac Jones because Mac Jones was obviously in the better situation with the better offensive line, the best head coach in NFL history, and a very good defense to boot that helps out the record wise. 
But now can we say this is definitive proof that he is one, if not the best quarterback in this class? Well, before we answer that question, I think it's only fitting that we watch some of his film first. So let's get into that. So how do you go about completing almost 67% of your passes, have a positive touchdown to interception ratio with one of the worst offensive lines in the league and the worst receiving core in the entire NFL? Well, what he was able to do is three things, consistently get rid of the ball quick with great accuracy and great anticipation. He was able to do this consistently well this first play is just an example of many of what he did on his 21 play opening touchdown drive against the bill belichick led patriots defense it's just knowing where you want to go with the ball pre-snap having a good base having great accuracy great timing great anticipation whether it's these slant routes these glance routes over the middle of the field you have to be accurate with these or these are going to be easily intercepted and you just have to do this time and time again but then we're going to start to look at some plays where it's like wow why was this not talking about because this makes him look like one of the best quarterbacks in the draft. And this is kind of the narrative being drafted later in the third round and even being heavily, heavily scrutinized. Watch Davis Mills get drafted. They go on and on about how this was just such a terrible pick. But if Trevor Lawrence or Zach Wilson made a play like this with the sneaky athleticism, breaking the pocket, throwing it down the sidelines perfectly, jump ball where his receiver and only his receiver can get it and go 60, 70 yards to the house, this would have been all over SportsCenter, not a single mention of it. And now we have great anticipation, pump faking, throwing it to a running back down the sidelines. These are just plays that make you think he could be number one overall. Throwing it 50 yards down the field, his deep ball accuracy was very, very good. His mechanics are spot on. He has a great base. He's able to get it up there off his back foot, throw it down the field. And these are the things that we consistently saw. And it's the ability to rebound from bad situations too. This is a second and seven on the 44 yard line against the Jaguars and everything holds up. The offensive line does a great job. They get the look they wanted. He's gonna throw this crossing route and dirt it right in his feet. So obviously these are not the type of plays you wanna have on your film. This is obviously a terrible throw, but what I absolutely love about this is the very next play. And yes, we're on the same 44 yard line. This time it's gonna be third and seven. The Jaguars are showing all out blitz and not only do they send it, the Texans don't do a great job picking it up, but in this case, he doesn't have anything going right for him off his back foot, being able to make a much tougher throw to the left side of his field across his body. Being able to bounce let back like this is so huge. It just shows the mental toughness that he has what it takes to not get frazzled. And if one play goes terribly wrong, go out there and make the right play the next time. It's a clean slate. And then you see some plays that make you think, wow, I didn't see any of this out of the quarterback draft prospects from this year's class. This is against Carolina and we're looking at the complete, we're looking to the left side of the field the entire way. We're going through our progressions. One, two, three, come back, full field progressions from the far left of the field to the far right, delivering this ball on the sideline. This is just something I haven't seen when going through analysis of this year's rookie draft class. Full field progressions, setting their feet, active feet, great base, delivering liver strike down the field. And he has a great base and really good mechanics, but it's not always going to be perfect like that. And this play really has it all. He's going to get the ball and then you're going to see Dami Amendola right in the middle of the field. Everything's locked up right now. And you see that a lot in Texans games. So he's getting off the read, but Danny Amendola starts slipping up the field and Davis Mills, he doesn't have a great base. He's really spread out and there's a pressure coming in his face. So off his back foot, he's going to be able to launch this. And I love Dami Amendola, but this is exactly what I'm talking about with the Texans. If this is Jamar Chase, if this is Jalen Watt, this is Devonte Smith. This is a house call. They're going to catch it and they're going to be gone 85 yards to the house, but he gets caught. So there's a few things on this play to like throwing off platform, extending the play, being accurate off your back foot. But then you also kind of see the talent he was working with in Houston, where this would have been a touchdown in a lot of other places. It's only going to be like a 30, 40 yard gain. And of course, obviously, it's not all checks downs. These are NFL throws. And again, comparing them to this draft class, we're going to have this deep dig route over the middle of the field. And these are the throws that I've been wanting to see from these prospects are probably going to go in the first round this year. But Davis Mills executes it perfectly. Full field progression read, steps into it, rips it. Really good accuracy, really good anticipation, knowing to find the second window to be able to rip the ball 25 yards down the field on a rope. Great anticipation, great accuracy. And these are just some of the things that I haven't been seeing from these prospects that I've really just been dying to jump out on the film to me. And Davis Mills started 11 games this season, and we're going to go comparing him to the other rookie quarterbacks that were drafted above him that were in similar situations. And when we go into this, he had 10 interceptions on the season. 
four of them being in his third career start against the Buffalo Bills. So not only going against the best defense in the league, it's raining cats and dogs outside. It's not great weather inclinations. You're heavily outmatched and not all of them were his fault. Everything's completely locked up on this play. This might be the worst interception out of all of them, trying to force it into a window. But then we get going on later. Unfortunately, it gets tipped at the line, goes over his receiver head. Not too much you can do about that. And then this is where they are down big. I kind of love that he sacrifices his numbers. He would never throw this ball if it was a tight game, but they're down like 30 at this point. And then here, he's just gonna try and check it down, goes right through his receiver hands, and the defense is off to the races. So even with the context of fours and interceptions coming in in one game, they weren't necessarily all of his fault either. I definitely think he would be QB1 in this year's draft class, but unfortunately we have to look at everything, all sorts of context, including the types of plays we saw and where we have people's ceilings at. And from a team perspective, where I see Davis Mills, I think he's more of a floor raiser, but not a ceiling raiser. And what I mean by this is when we look at Davis Mills, what he can do with a very bad team is spectacular. And not to give him an NFL comparison, but when I look like a guy at Kirk Cousins compared to Patrick Mahomes, that's a floor raiser compared to a ceiling raiser. I think if you gave Kirk Cousins a bad offensive line and not that many weapons, he could still go out there and put very good numbers. He's a very smart guy, knows how to read defenses pre-snap. He's accurate. He gets the ball out of his hands quick. But if you gave him all of the talent and speed that you could give a guy like Mahomes or Josh Allen, he couldn't raise their level of excellence to reach their full potential. This is kind of where I see Davis Mills and where I see a guy like Zach Wilson and Trevor Lawrence. If you were to give them a stacked on unbelievably crazy team and if they hit their potential they could be an MVP Super Bowl winning quarterback and where I see Davis Mills I think he can do very very well with a bad team and he's only going to get better obviously if he has more time to throw he has more receivers that can create more separation but the talent and his ceiling and what he's able to do athletically it's just capped at some point, so I don't think we can definitively say that he's the best, but I don't want this to be some sort of knock against Davis Mills, because I think he went out there and was incredibly impressive, and this is why the Texans have two first-round picks and are not going to use either one of their first-round picks on a quarterback. They believe that they found their guy to build around, and I don't think they're wrong in thinking this, because he proved not only can he play at an NFL level, but he can be a really good NFL quarterback, and since he had almost had zero media coverage throughout the season, it's easy to see how this got overlooked but even if he was picked in the first round I think he would have lived up and only exceeded any expectations that the media would have with him with what he had to work with on the Texans I think Davis Mills is incredibly talented and really sneakily athletic running an unofficial 45840 at his pro day I think he's very bright has really good accuracy and we don't really know how to give a full analysis on who he is as a player quite yet because he was so limited with time in the pocket there was a lack of creative play calling and just a lack of speed and talent around him to the people he was throwing to. I am very excited to see how he continues to grow in this organization and hopefully how we love can do good by him. And lastly, when we look at the players in this draft, even though with all of these quarterbacks, he would probably be the first round pick this year. That doesn't mean a guy like Sam Howell is a first round talent, even if he would have been third or fourth rounder just one year prior and vice versa. So we have to give these third rounders a chance if they're playing up to NFL starting standards. So keep that in mind when grading performances in this year's rookie class, because where would some of these guys gone in last year's draft class? We kind of left to look at it like that. Not exactly that they were the six overall pick and they have to perform that way. We have to look at who they actually are. And I think that is a perfect example of Davis Mills on where he would have been from last year's draft class to this one. But that's what I think. I want to know what you guys think. Make sure to like videos. If you like videos like these, make sure to comment down below what you think about Davis Mills and make sure to subscribe if you enjoy daily sports content. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. And as always, I will see you all tomorrow. Peace.